Every winter, approximately 250,000 American families have one or more rooms in their homes ruined by water pipes freezing and breaking. Ice expands, pipes don't. Water, when frozen, will expand 9% in volume. It's easy to see why metal and plastic pipes can burst. Just a 1 8 inch crack in a pipe can release more than 250 gallons per day, and that's going to destroy everything in its path. Even PEX water lines, they're designed to expand and contract a little bit, but when, when they freeze, they're an absolute bear to thaw out, and sometimes you have to rip open walls to do it. You start thinking about, can frozen pipes be prevented? In cold locations, there is no guarantee that insulation or even pipe insulation is going to help. Sometimes these pipe or freeze pre prevention measures are not enough. So what do we do? That's the time to add electric pipe freeze protection heating cables. The heat cables raise the ambient temperature in the pipe and we often see them used in residential and a lot of commercial applications such as protecting water lines and cooling towers. We see them a lot on plumbing lines, exposed P-traps, sprinkler lines like uh, fire prevention sprinkler lines, tanks, valves, and even processing lines. I've seen them at my favorite brewery recently. We chose to install recently some pipe freeze prevention cable from a company called WarmUp. WarmUp offers two types of pipe freeze prevention. Pre-terminated cable, which is already made up at the factory and you just plug it in, and self-regulating freeze protection cable. Both of these cables are self-regulating and what that means is that it has a special conductive core between these two internal bus wires and it makes it ideal for freeze protection because it regulates the heat output depending on the ambient temperatures. So you're using just enough heat to get the job done. You're not heating all the time. You're not heating a little too little. It's more energy efficient to run. I want to talk about the pre-terminated cable kits. Those are useful for homeowners and for areas under mobile homes and things like that. They come pre-assembled in 6, 12, 18, 24, 75, and 100 feet long. And they terminate in a 30-inch plug that you plug in. The colder the pipe, the more heat it puts out, and it'll put up up to 5 watts of heat per lineal foot. They're specifically designed for plastic or metal pipes and prevent freezing in open, accessible areas such as piping inside of unheated buildings, mobile homes, unconditioned residential spaces, attics, um, or even, you know, uh, cottages or something. Here's five tips. Don't bury the cable in a wall or ceiling. That's dangerous. It's got to be accessible. Two. Make sure that you only use it on water lines, and if you're going to use it, use pipe insulation. They're designed especially to be used with pipe insulation. They'll be effective and efficient. Don't cross or overlap the cables if you don't have to, and always buy a little bit longer cable than you need, especially if you have turns and valves and, and, and spigots and things like that. You want to make sure that you test the cable before and during your installation and, and before you cover it with insulation. The cable should reach temperatures of 50 to 65 degrees within minutes. Self-regulating freeze protection is basically self-regulating energy efficient industrial grade wire. And it's suited for, well it's mostly suited more for commercial but I'm seeing it more and more in residential applications. It's parallel bus wire construction makes it easier to install the cable in zones or series. And since it can be cut to any length on scene, you can pretty much run it all over the place. One nice feature is you can single lap it or overlap and it won't overheat. And it can be installed, like I said, in any length up to 460 feet in wet or dry locations. The cable operates at 120, 208, up to 277 volts and delivers 3, 5, or 8 watts of heat per foot. The self-regulating freeze cable, uh, basically you, you usually install it on the bottom of the, of the pipe if the heat's rising. There are 10 tips, and here's my tips on this. Do not install the heating cable on equipment that could become hotter than the cable's maximum temperature. That's obviously important. Uh, don't install heating cable in an area where the equipment contains potentially corrosive materials. You could damage the, if there's a leak in the pipe, you could damage the cable. And you want to make sure that 
uh, if you're installing this, make sure you, if you if you get turns in elbows, go on the outside radius of the elbow. Any cable with an ins insulation resistance reading less than 10 ohms before installation should not be installed. The sensor should be positioned so that it is not influenced by the heat of the cable and the temperature of that heating cable. So you want to make sure it's a little bit away. And adding additional heat or a backup system, if you need to add a backup system, they recommend that you install it like 5 and 7 o'clock on, uh, on, on a clock and you keep it 2 inches space between the runs. So 5 and 7 and, and just run it on the bottom of the pipe. Attaching the wire to the pipe, you want to use aluminum foil tape and, and just basically wrap it up maybe every 12 inches or so. Make sure they have good contact with the pipe. That's, that's the most important. Just make sure you have good contact. Sometimes you have to use a spiral method and that works. You loop in the wire every, say, three or four inches along the pipe. And if you've got extra cable at the end you don't want to cut or something, you could do that. Pipe insulation greatly inf increases efficiency and it's going to prevent heat loss. You have to use pipe insulation. It ensures the proper performance of the heat system. The generally accepted maintenance temperature for freeze protection on water pipes is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I use the warm-ups website cable selection guide to kind of guide me a little bit, but sometimes I got a little bit confused. I just reached out to their customer service. They have a 24-7, 365 technical service. You know, if you're installing this in the field, you got a question, you just call it. It's easy, it's simple, and they walk you through the process. So the website's helpful. If it's a little too technical for you, just give them a call. And that's what I did. It was perfect. Neglecting your plumbing pipes in the winter months can lead to a variety of costs from water damage and can run anywhere from a few thousand to multi-thousand dollars in damage. If a pipe bursts while you're not at home, there's a good chance that you're going to have significant flooding damage. I've seen it. I've repaired a bunch of it. Installing a warm-up heat tracing system, it's not only cheap insurance, but it's being proactive and a cost-effective way to prevent, protect your investment. I'm Rob Robillard. We'll see you next time. Take care.